The Galactic Council chamber was filled with the voices of a thousand species, all engaged in heated debate. At the center sat the wise old Aurelian envoy, his drooping face tentacles indicating his weary impatience. The order he called out in his native tongue, the translator devices worn by all rendering it into their own languages. We must have order if we are to address the petition by the humans. A ripple of amusement and derision passed through the assembled delegates. The newest spacefaring race, humans, had burst unexpectedly onto the galactic scene with crude but effective warp drives and an irrepressible urge to explore. They reminded many elder species of their own hopeful youth, so long ago. The human ambassador stood, clearing his throat. Ambassador Roma was young, even by human standards, his smooth face only lightly lined. He activated the translator at his collar and spoke. Esteemed council members, he began, as you know, the current expansion of the Zixix Empire threatens many systems along the Perseus arm. Billions of thinking beings find themselves under risk of domination or slaughter. The council erupted into dismissive chatter. The Sixix had been expanding and conquering for millennia. Such was the way of things. Ambassador Roma raised his voice. Billions of lives, sentient beings of all kinds, faced with subjugation or death, and yet we debate trade policy and scientific exchanges as if nothing dire is happening. I call upon this council to take action, to intervene and halt this brutal imperialism. He sat to the sound of patronizing laughter echoing around the vast chamber. An Aurelian delegate adjusted his breathing apparatus. Young human, what you ask is impossible. No single race can halt the X66 alone. Collective action has been tried before and failed. They are too powerful, too unrelenting. The avian clicks clicked her beak. Violence only breeds more violence. The galaxy has cycled through innumerable wars. In time, even the Zixix will burn themselves out or collapse inward. Ambassador Roma jumped back to his feet. So we do nothing, while entire civilizations are snuffed out. I expected more from the leadership of the galaxy, the pinnacle of ethical consideration and progress. A four-armed Exultox delegate gave an elaborate shrug. Civilizations rise and fall, young one. Star systems change hands continually on the stellar timescale. What seems tragic or frightening to your abbreviated lifespans is simply the turning of seasons to we who endure for aeons. The human pounded a fist on his desk. I cannot accept that. Every thinking being has a right to life and liberty. If this council will not act, humanity will. The chamber erupted into incredulous laughter. The tiny human delegation, representing their single home system, dared to challenge an unstoppable force that had crushed all in its path. Over the next cycles, rumors spread across the galaxy of unexpected human activity. Small groups of human ships began appearing at systems in the path of the x onslaught, aid convoys and refugee assistance at first. Then daring hit and run raids harrying x supply lines, they accomplished little but annoy the unstoppable empire and few other races joined in. The humans' efforts seemed tragically futile. When word came that the pivotal system of Partox had fallen to the Ixix, the council convened in emergency session again. Ambassador Roma stood to speak, his youthful face now lined with exhaustion and stress. The situation grows dire. The Ixix have taken Partox and now threaten to split the galaxy in two. Again, I plead for the assistance of this council. Help my people defend those who cannot defend themselves. Tolerant smiles greeted his words. An elder Ryle delegate leaned forward with a sigh. My young friend, while your ideals are admirable, reality cannot be denied. How long can your brief-lived race continue this futile resistance? How many human lives will be lost challenging an irresistible force like the Zixix? Ambassador Roma trembled, tears filling his eyes. As many as it takes. Twenty thousand human volunteers now man the hastily built outpost station near Partox, preparing for the enemy's next strike. More arrive every cycle. Back in our home system, millions more stand ready to take up the cause. A shocked mummer swept the council. Were the humans mad? Throwing their short lives away in a vain attempt to halt the relentless Zixix war machine seemed tragic even to the longest-lived beings present. Some shook their heads sadly, others turned away. 
unable to watch the idealistic young race commit racial suicide. Then a deep voice spoke from an alcove often left empty. All eyes turned to the ancient wanderer delegate, whose ancient face was a map of intricate lines and symbols. To live a single Aeon Grant's perspective he intoned slowly. To live a dozen teaches wisdom. The human ambassador speaks truth every innocent life matters. His people have awakened my soul from a slumber of complacency. We who have seen so much crisis become numb to what should shock and appall. He stood, robes shifting like starfields. The humans have little time, yet waste none of it debating what should be while innocents suffer. They demand action now. In this they shame us all. To the young race's astonishment, the old wanderer left his seat and came to stand by the human side, placing an age-spotted hand on his shoulder. I pledge the aid of my people. We shall depart at once for Partox he glanced defiantly around the vast chamber, as if daring others to speak against him. None did. In the cycles that followed, events progressed differently than galactic common wisdom had assumed. The expected efficient Ixix conquest of Partox met, stiff resistance from the ragtag multispecies defenders rallied by the small but fierce human contingent. Casualties were horrific, as wave after wave of Zixix warriors threw themselves ruthlessly into the attack. But the defenders clung stubbornly to their asteroid stations and particle cannon outposts, bloodied but unbroken in spirit. The Council received increasingly angry threats and warnings from Zixix representatives, demanding that member species immediately cease all support, military and otherwise, for the Partox insurrectionists. But no longer did patronizing humor or dismissiveness greet these furious warnings. Quietly yet firmly, the United Council stood by their earlier allowance of voluntary assistance requested by the desperate human ambassador. When the Yig-6 changed tactics and began a campaign of shocking brutality against civilian transports and orbital colonies at Partox, they discovered humanity's fury unleashed. Faster than any anticipated, massed human strike groups appeared from secret staging points. The savage punishment they inflicted on Jixix military assets with brilliantly ruthless maneuvers did much to safeguard the system's innocent population centers. Word soon spread that the Wanderer's promised aid had also arrived, received by the defenders with awe and tearful relief. Ancient long-range battle stations that isolated and decimated the compromised sectors of the Zixix supply infrastructure. For the first time in ages, enemies of the galaxy-spanning empire began experiencing faint glimmers of hope. And to the amazement of all and the delight of humans and their allies, the proof eventually became clear. After two full cycles of brutal assault and heavy casualties with little gain, the relentless Zixix offensive into the Partox system ground to a halt. Their aging but still formidable emperor called an end to the wasteful squandering of resources on an irrelevant border system and redeployed the battered attack forces to what were assumed to be more critical areas along their ever-expanding frontier. Behind this excuse, few failed to see the unprecedented truth. The indomitable Exix war machine had been fought to a standstill by an unlikely collection of idealists, volunteers, and defenders of freedom. As the Council raced to dispatch diplomats and begin negotiations with suddenly receptive Zixix administrators regarding possible truce terms and territorial limitations, Ambassador Roma and his small staff found themselves inundated with profound expressions of appreciation and vows of allegiance. The influence and popularity of humanity seemed to grow with each passing cycle. When the young ambassador finally stood once more to address the full Council, the ovation from the gathered delegates lasted several minutes before he could be heard. As the adoring eyes of dozens of species regarded him with admiration and respect, Roma smiled wearily but radiantly. You honor us with your praise, he said earnestly, but the true heroes are those who selflessly risk all for high ideals the volunteers still rebuilding Partox, the refugees able to return home, the children who now have a future. He drew himself upright, the weight of responsibility both sobering and electrifying, we may be a young race, new to the community of worlds, but we have proven that determination and faith can make dreams reality. My people yet believe that through courage and cooperation, we can change things, that working together we can forge a galaxy where all may live and thrive in peace. Amid the resounding cheers, Ambassador Roma's gaze met that of the ancient wanderer who nodded almost imperceptibly in profound approval. 
the endless cycles of complacency were over. Under humanity's influence, a renewed spirit of optimism, heroism and unity was igniting across the stars. A future that had seemed fixed and unchangeable was now full of hope and possibility.